I wanted to make a quick video about a phenomenon that has gone on for a while, but I've noticed has been getting more attention lately. It has to do with film critics. So this year, Warner Brothers put out two movies that seemed to polarize moviegoers and critics, Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad most recently. Both of them got pretty dismal reviews from mainstream movie critics, and average to good response from DC fans and regular moviegoers. Although both have been sort of disappointing in keeping up their very front-loaded box office grosses, but that's an entirely different matter. Especially in the days after the release of these two films, but just generally over the last couple years, I've heard a lot of people complaining about movie critics, and specifically about the website Rotten Tomatoes. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say that they disagree with Rotten Tomatoes, or they hate it because they're overly harsh on movies or inaccurate. I'll address that last bit more closely in a second, but I'd first like to point out that all these comments represent a fundamental lack of understanding of how Rotten Tomatoes works. For those confused, I wanted to take a quick second to explain. So, Rotten Tomatoes is a movie review aggregation website. Aggregation meaning the creation of some sort of conclusion or whole out of many fragmented parts collected together. Rotten Tomatoes is not an entity itself which produces movie reviews, it simply aggregates existing reviews by film critics. The percentage score that you see is not the same as, say, the score out of 10 you see on IMDb. For instance, Batman vs Superman's rating of 27% does not indicate a movie that Rotten Tomatoes thinks is only 27% good. The number is the percentage of movie critics who gave it a positive review, which Rotten Tomatoes counts as any review equal to or above the critics' equivalent of a 6 out of 10 rating. Below the percentage of approval is the average rating given, which is the actual rating given by most critics. Next to that is the critical consensus statement, which briefly summarizes the common points of praise and criticism from critics about the movie. If you're looking for a website whose posted scores actually reflect the average scores assigned by critics, you would be looking for Metacritic, which scores movies based on a weighted average out of 100. Notice how the Metacritic rating out of 100 is often very similar to the Rotten Tomatoes average rating out of 10. To summarize, Rotten Tomatoes scores are simply telling you how likable the film was to critics. Saying you hate Rotten Tomatoes because it typically shows the fact that movies you like have been getting negative reviews is kind of like saying you hate the Pew Research Center for reporting that some number of Americans support something you don't. In reality, all that's happening is you're, understandably, upset that so many people disagree with you on something. Which brings us back to one of the complaints I mentioned earlier, that critics are inaccurate or wrong. There's a weird idea being corroborated recently that critics and people can be wrong about whether or not a movie is good. Even the Nostalgia Critic uploaded a video recently called When Are Critics Wrong? I think this is a kind of silly conversation to have, because in discussing art and entertainment, obviously no one is right or wrong. People simply have differing opinions. And many people I think would be fine with admitting that that's the truth, but the next complaint after that is usually that critics are too snobby, that they're looking for oscar baity groundbreaking films in every movie, and can never just enjoy a movie for what it is. But most audience members and most critics are coming at movies from very different but objectively equally viable places. The majority of film critics have presumably some sort of knowledge of the language of filmmaking and have a passion for art and film, most of them and accordingly will give higher praise to a film that appeals to the senses and biases that they've developed out of that mindset. They also see way more movies than most moviegoers ever will, with mainstream critics seeing at the very least every single wide release a year, which is about three or four movies a weekend, so it logically takes a bit more to impress them. Most filmgoers go to the theater maybe three or four times a year, generally don't have incredible knowledge of filmmaking, and don't really care that much. And as soon as I say that, people say that I'm being condescending, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. If you don't know much about film and don't care to connect with every movie you see on a deeper level than simply getting what you paid for at the surface level, Congratulations, you're a completely normal person operating like 99% of the rest of mankind. And believe it or not, there is value in that. 
After my Hollywood Crash video, some film buffs asked why I decided to focus on discussing films as an entertainment product rather than as an art form. And the reason is honestly because film is both, and that's important. Just because the commercial side of film may seem to movie nerds like me like it's more superficial or less intellectually stimulating than film as art, doesn't mean that there's no reason to consider it as a product for consumption especially when the vast majority of people who see movies see it as just that, and oftentimes a little more. I encourage everyone to just simply talk about movies however they wish. And there is something to be said for people who believe critics to be pretentious and attention-seeking, just trying to look smart or seem superior to other people, and I can actually think of specific examples of critics who are like that. But as someone who reads a lot of critical stuff and writes about movies himself, I can assure you that the vast majority of critical reviews, as well as sites like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, don't exist to tell you what to see or to make you feel bad for liking something. They're there to add a voice to inform a choice of purchase. Hey, you're thinking of seeing this movie? I saw it and I think I know some things about movies and get paid to write about them. Here's what I thought of it. The idea is that the reader will take the opinions given within the context of the critic's apparent frame of mind, and apply it to their own viewing habits and tastes and decide accordingly. Now a lot of people say they more often will go to their friends for a movie recommendation than critics, and that's perfectly fine, but a lot of them say they do it because their friends are more trustworthy, when what's actually happening is that you already know your friends' tastes and most likely they're pretty similar to yours. The thing that cracks me up about that is that it's entirely possible to do the same thing with critics, they're just people with opinions that may or may not match yours. The idea that film critics are instead some hive mind bent on sucking the fun out of moviegoing for regular people, meanwhile me and all my friends are the ones who really got it figured out, is a really narcissistic way to look at movies. Bottom line, it's all about understanding different tastes and perspectives and applying them with your own. And whether you find more insight personally for your choices from critics or your friends is up to you and I do not care. But I kinda wish people would get off their high horse a little bit thinking that film critics are somehow wrong or unreliable, simply because they don't have the exact same perspective on what makes a movie good as you do. Or that they're out to get you or being paid by studios just because they had the audacity to not immediately love your favorite thing. At the end of the day, critics are a diverse group of people with different tastes and perspectives and opinions that coincidentally usually skew toward one way or the other with certain types of films. Just like literally every other audience member. I don't know, I'm mostly just rambling at this point, but I've seen so many fights online about whether or not a Rotten Tomatoes score was fair or not, and I just don't get it. Movies are not created with a rating that they deserve to get that only some people get right and others don't. Movies exist, and everyone rates them differently based on their own tastes and biases. Critics are the exact same way, just with maybe a little more technical knowledge than the average Joe, and they get paid to do it. But at the end of the day, I think everybody could probably benefit from stepping back every once in a while, and realizing that you and your opinions matter just as little as everyone else's. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kinda odd. No barking from the dog, no small. And mama cooked the breakfast with no harm. I got my grub on, but didn't dig out, finally got a call.